so the applications you know these are very application oriented topics that we'll study now although we'll not we may not study the algorithm directly so what i uh, what i would say is whatever techniques that we study in number theory and abstract algebra are directly used in designing cryptographic algorithms okay and uh, especially if you have studied rsa algorithm so we'll find some of the things quite familiar but even if you have not no problem we'll start with uh, the basics and build up that you so Okay, so let's start with this uh, basic concept of a GCD, okay? greatest common divisor, GCD. Okay, so what is a divisor? So for example, if the number is 12, then the divisors are 1, 2, three four six and twelve itself okay now what do you mean by common devices so let's say we'll take another number let's say 18 and divisors of 18 are one two three six nine and 18 so now we will say that the set of common divisors set of common divisors is 1 2 3 6 and greatest common divisor is 6 Okay. Now, in general, okay. so if what is the definition of GCD is that if A and B are integers, okay, both not zero, both not zero. Then, then it always has a GCD. Okay, it will always have a GCD, and let's denote it by D. Okay, so it always has a GCD. It will always have. It means the pair of integers will always have a GCD. D, GCD of A and B. Okay. So let's take one more example and you tell me the GCD. It's very basic level I'm starting with, but still. So within a, within a minute, you can give the answers. GCD of 24 and 52. GCD of 24 and 52. Four. Yes. Then GCD of GCD of 15 and 28. GCD of 15 and 28. Okay. 
28 i'm saying 1 right so dcd of 15 and 28 is 1 so there is a special terminology for such numbers okay so if gcd of a and b is 1 then a and b are said to be relatively prime they are said to be relatively prime relatively prime to each other okay so some other examples of this can be let's say 21 and 40 gcd of 21 and 40 if you think for a minute their gcd is also one therefore 21 and 40 are relatively prime now there is an interesting uh, result basically if you take any two consecutive numbers say for example gcd of 14 and 15 take any two consecutive numbers in your head and you will find that their gcd is always one they are always relatively prime okay but that is not uh, okay so that is just an observation but it is not very important right now definition of relatively prime is important next part is okay so now this is and say this was the definition of relatively prime okay now there is a fact or a proposition that if d is the gcd of a and b then gcd of a upon d and b upon d will always be one okay do you want the proof of this actually proof is not required because we don't have proofs like any any doubts any questions up to this point okay i think no questions so <clears throat> Now, how do we calculate the GCD? How do we calculate the GCD? So one way that we saw was we listed all the divisors and we found out the common divisors and then we uh, we manually like we actually found out the largest one out of it. Okay. So let's say we have a bigger number. Okay, now there is a result that any number can be factored into its prime factors basically. And prime numbers, uh, I'm not going into such basic things like what are prime numbers, what are composite numbers. So you know what prime numbers are. Prime numbers, for prime numbers, the divisors are only one and the number itself. and numbers which are not prime numbers are composite numbers okay we consider only like numbers starting from two one is neither composite nor prime okay and uh, you know two is the first prime and so on so let's say we want to find the gcd of uh, 
84 and 264. Now this becomes very cumbersome if we try to write down all the factors of these numbers. Okay. So instead of like instead of listing out all the factors, what we'll do is we'll perform prime factorization of each. So 84 is 2 into 2 into 3 into 7. This is the prime factorization. Okay. Similarly, 264, since I've already I already have the calculation with me. So it is 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 11. Okay. Once you find this factorization, and how do you find this factorization? You can keep on dividing it by 2. In these techniques you must have studied during your school days or whatever. So keep on dividing it by 2. Then when it's exhausted, you can divide it by 3. Some amount of brute force and trial and error is involved in this. And you get the prime factorization. And then you find out the common factors. So the common factors here are common prime factors are 2, 2, 3. Okay. So the GCD will be the product of the common factors that is 2 into 2 into 3 which is 12 okay now the application that we are talking about that is cryptography if you have studied RSA and other uh, algorithms the keys on which these operations are to be performed that we study the keys are not two digits, three digits, or four digits. Okay, they are sometimes 50 digits or even hundreds of digits long numbers. Okay, so for such numbers, it is very difficult for even for a computer to find the factors. Okay, while creating the key itself. Okay, difficulty of breaking the algorithm is another thing. What I'm saying is while even the legitimate user when they will have to create the key and you know send the message and then the receiver will have to decrypt it so encryption and decryption itself will take a lot of time and it will be very expensive computationally okay so what do we do so there is a result that we can use So for example, we want to calculate the GCD of 1005 and 500. Okay. So let, let D be the GCD of 1005 and 500. Okay. Then we know that, okay, because it is the GCD, we know that then, okay, now D divides now this vertical bar means divides i think i had introduced this you know, sometimes when in when in uh, when creating a graph in graph theory thing so d divides 1005 vertical bar means divides okay so for example if i say 2 divides 4 okay or 7 divides 49 divides so D divides 1005 and D divides 500. Okay. Now there is a result that Is the result that I write it here? If D divides A and D divides B, 
then d divides ax plus by a where a a b d x y all are integers all are integers you say if a d divides a and d divides b then d divides the combination of a and b okay any combination of a and b. so as a smaller example i can say since okay okay 3 divides 9 and taking the same number so 3 divides 9 and 3 divides 21 okay so i can take any combination of 9 and 21 and 3 will divide them as well okay it divides 9 and 3 divides 21 therefore 3 divides any combination so you can say 7 times 9 Plus eleven times twenty-one. Okay, so this is the result. So using this, uh, you no know, result or this fact here, can you? Okay, what can you do here? What can you see? Five. Yes. Five is the final answer. But my point is, you can use this result here in some way. So you can simplify this into, let's say, so you have d divided by one thousand five. From one thousand five, you can subtract thousand. It is, you can subtract two into five hundred, and D will still divide this entire thing. Okay, this is the combination of one thousand five and five hundred, and D will divide this. So that is D, whatever it is, it divides five. Now five is a prime number. Okay. So five is a prime number, which means that d is either one or d is five. Okay. Now we see that five divides one thousand five and five divides five hundred. Therefore, we go with d is five. Okay. If the number or the factor could not divide one of these, then we we would have had to go with one. Did you get this point? Okay, yeah, but why d divides one thousand? Why multiplied with two? Okay. okay, I think you did not. Okay, so did you get the result that if d divides a and d divides b, then d divides a x plus b y. Yes, that that much part is clear. So let's say the numerical example that we saw. So three divides nine, and three divides twenty-one. So any combination of nine and twenty-one. Okay, either you simply add combination means addition. Okay, so nine plus twenty-one, three will divide that. Any combination, you know, linear combination, which means that I can multiply nine with anything, and I can multiply twenty-one with anything. I can add them. And three will divide that as well. So that is up to that part. Is it clear? Okay. Right. So right. 
so in this case what i'm saying is gcd of 1005 and 500 is d some unknown d okay because it is the gcd therefore it has to divide both the numbers individually because d is a gcd of 1005 and 500 so d must divide 1005 and D must divide 500. Okay. Now, if I did not go with this technique, what would I have to do? I will have to write down the prime factorization of 1005 and I will have to write down the prime factorization of 500. Now, these numbers may be obvious, but you can just understand this point. Do you get this point? If I don't use this method, I will have to write the prime factorization of 1005. I will have to write the prime factorization of 500 and then underline the common factors and find the GCD. Is this clear what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. I want to avoid that. I want to avoid that. I want to avoid finding all the prime factors and doing all that process. So what I'm simplifying is D divides 1005 and D divides 500. So any linear combination. Okay, so I can say D divides 1005 plus 500. Okay, instead of this. Okay, now Aditya asks me, what if the number is 499 instead of 500? If the number was 499, then something else would have happened. Right. Let me explain this first and then we'll see for that. Okay, so instead of directly going for the simplification, just a second. instead of directly going for the simplification, what I can say is D divides 1005 plus 500. This holds true. So here my A is this and B is this. So D divides 1005 X plus 500 Y. Any multiple of A plus any multiple of B. Okay. Now I wanted to simplify this to the lowest number possible. So I saw that, you know, if I subtract 1000, how did thousand come? It just you know it's my observation. It's my observation. Okay. So I put x as one itself and y as minus two. Then I got this. Right? Then I got this fact that d divides one thousand five minus two into five hundred, which got simplified into d divides five. Now as Aditya is saying, what if it was 499? Okay, so if it was 499, I'll still go for how far I can reduce it. Okay, so 499 multiplied by 2 is 998. Right? I cannot go any further than that. So what I can do is, okay, this is if, huh? don't confuse this. Yeah, okay, is this part clear? Then I will go for 499. Is this part clear now or still any doubts? In this part? This part is clear, right? And still, if, you have, if anyone has any doubt, you can unmute and ask. No, no, no problems. So if the other number is 499 instead of 500, what will happen is I'll think that 490, how far I can reduce this? So 1005, and you know 499 ones are 499 twos are 998 okay so i will do 1005 minus 2 into 499 i cannot go I, I don't want to go into negative numbers okay so this will be d divided by 7 right 7 Okay, is this clear? Ah, yes, yes, I'm coming to that part. So D divides, D divides seven, 
okay so either d can be 1 or d can be 7 all right so now what i will do is i will try to divide these numbers by 7 so okay let's again this is your so i will first try the smaller number so does 7 divide 419 no it does not so there is no point like 7 cannot be a gcd of these two numbers okay so therefore d has to be 1 and therefore gcd has to be 1 got the point Kanat, got the point uh, yes sir yes okay so hmm, this was one of the tricks or techniques that we can use well so okay so the next thing is um, okay so this is totally a different technique okay now there is an algorithm to compute the gcd okay of two numbers without doing any of these things okay Okay, this is the Euclidean algorithm that we are studying now. The Euclidean algorithm to find the GCD. So let's say we want to compute the GCD of 123 and 456. Okay, now forget all the previous techniques for a while now okay obviously different techniques can be applied at different places you know the previous techniques you can also apply it here but let's study the euclidean algorithm now okay so the greater number of the two is 456 so 456 is equal to now we'll try to divide 456 by 123 so 123 2s are 246, 123, 3s are 369, 123, 4s are 492, which exceeds. So the closest is 3 times 123, and that is 369. So find the difference of 369, and this, what will be the remainder? The remainder should be 87. Try to calculate side by side now and very cal calculate and verify you know okay so now we'll shift everything to the left okay so 123 shifts left comes here 87 comes here and we want to express the same thing again so 87 once 87 2 exceeds 87 multiplied by 2 exceeds so you know one multiplied by 87 itself difference should be 36 verify again shift left 87 comes here 36 comes here now 36 to the 72 36 threes are 100 and uh, 108 right so exceeds so 2 into 36 72 remainder 15 again shift left 36 is equal to you know 36 shifted 15 shifted here so 15 twos are 30 15 threes are 45 so get this similarly 15 then 6 so 6 threes are 18 6 twos are 12 is the okay 2 is the quotient 3 is the remainder and finally 
six shifts here, three shifts here, and we find the remainder to be zero. <clears throat> okay, so we divide the smaller of the two numbers by the larger number. Whatever the remainder we get, we write it here, and then we in the next step we shift everything to the left so this this one goes out you know and we get a new remainder again repeat in the same manner so you can call this process as you know, shift left shift left and divide So will we get zero at the end every time? Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, so let's try. Sir. Can uh, we solve yeah. this uh, with the previous method? Again, it won't be necessary. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. So, you know, it it is time consuming. Right. Okay. So. I'll suggest like, see, uh, you cannot do it directly. That is, uh, like in the previous case, the example was such that you, okay, one of the factors was one. So first of all, you will have to come up with a multiple for 123 and a multiple for 456, and one of them will be negative. Okay, so such that there, you know, difference comes out as something just small enough okay so if i use this directly like you know if i say d divides 123 and right other way d divides 456 and d divides 123 and if i use this directly what i'll get is you know d divides Four fifty six minus three into uh, you know one twenty three. Okay, so I will get that d divides eighty seven. D divides eighty seven. Now our problem is reduced. D divides eighty seven is now you will have to list down what all divides eighty seven. Eighty seven is a multiple of three, 29 threes are 87. It's a simple case, so I'll do it anyway. So D can be, you know, one, or it can be 29, or one, one, three, 29, or 87. Okay. Wait a minute, did I go wrong somewhere? It's right. Okay, do you agree with this part? Is this clear? Whoever asked the question? Yeah. Yeah. So now what I'll what I'll have to do is the two numbers that I have is four fifty six and one twenty three. You know, so one obviously divides them. So I'll try all the numbers. Okay. In this case it was quite simple, so it just happened. You normally start with the greater side. So 87, whether it divides either of them, it does not. 29, does it divide either of them? You know, you can try, but it, it, it must not. Okay, right? 29, 29, uh, 26, 266, and No, so 29 does not divide this. 
then we come to three. So three divides this sum of all the digits is three. Three divides this. So three is our GCD. Okay. But the algorithm is important. That's why like we will modify this algorithm into something very useful, basically. So that's why we are going by the algorithm. The techniques, as I said before, the techniques work. Okay, let's try one more GCD. So GCD of 119 and 259 okay i'll give you okay i'll start solving after one minute you try to solve it first on your own i will start solving after one minute try to solve this by using euclidean algorithm and then you can verify it with what i solved here verify so Did you get the same calculations? If anyone got anything else, you can tell me. Okay. So the last non-zero remainder, that is seven, is the GCD. Okay. Last non-zero remainder is the GCD. GCD is seven. Okay. Okay, now this can also be written in general in terms of you know variables actually you must have already coded this because this is one of the introductory programs that is normally solved you know uh, as in, a, in an introductory programming course so i suggest that you should try to code this algorithm okay in whichever language c c plus plus java python whatever okay so okay so the next thing that we'll study and which is of more interest to us is the extended euclidean algorithm extended euclidean algorithm so the euclidean algorithm tells us one important result or fact you can say not result a fact which in fact even the earlier technique that we studied even that also points towards this fact and the fact is that gcd of a and b can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b GCD of A and B can be expressed as a linear combination of A and B. That is, GCD of A and B is AX plus BY. Well, no, X and Y are also integers, positive, negative, anything. 
but x and y are also integers. So for example, GCD of 123 and 456 was 3. 456 and 123 was 3. So if you go back into that calculation, You can, okay, so in this example, it was very simple. Okay, so 1005 minus twice into 500 directly gave its GCD. Okay, so in this case, actually, now this is very, so you can verify this, okay? So 456 into 17 minus 123 into 63, it gives you three. Now, how do you find 17 or 63? That is not required actually, but the, the the result is that it can be expressed. Okay, so GCD of the second one was GCD of 259 and 119 was 7. So it can be expressed like this but how do you obtain the 17 and 63 and 6 and 13 these can be obtained so this x and y these can be obtained by using the extended euclidean algorithm Okay, so if you use the Euclidean algorithm to arrive at the GCD of two numbers, you can use the extended Euclidean algorithm to arrive at X and Y. Okay, arrive at X and Y. Okay, so again, we'll I'll go back to these calculations that we did for 456 and 123. and move this calculation somewhere. Okay, so we'll build a table basically. So we started with four fifty six and one twenty three. So entry in the first column will be 456x plus 123y, where x and y are 
integers to be found okay so what is 456 456 is you know you get the point what i'm trying to make here the equation is 4 456 is 456x plus 123y. Saurabh? Saurabh? Okay. So are x and y random integers? No. X and y are not random. X and y are very specific and we have to find x and y. Okay. So what? what? Is the font okay now? Arun? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the equation that we have. So whatever is there on the LHS, it has to be expressed as 456x plus 123y. So trivially, so when let's say 456 is 1 here and 0 here, and 123 is 0 here and 1 here, trivial case. Okay, this is the starting point that we have. Then look at the first line of the calculations here. Okay, 456 is 3 into 123 plus 87. Now this line will rewrite as will rewrite by taking this 3 into 223 on the other side. Okay, so we'll rewrite this line as 87 is equal to 456 minus 3 into 123. Okay, so what will happen by this is when I want 87, my x is 1 and my y is minus 3. Is the third row clear to all? Is the third row clear? Reply on the chat is the third row clear? Yes. If anyone has any questions, you can stop me and ask. Okay. Then, now this tells us that 87 is 456 into 1 plus 123 into minus 3. Okay, x and y. Now, move to the second row of the calculation. 123 is 1 into 87 plus 36. Now, you can write this as 36 is 123 minus 1 into 87. So in the column and rows, we write this as thirty six is minus one into four. Right, minus one x and four y. And how did we obtain this? Is We performed second row minus third row. This is another observation that you can make. So you obtain that you can obtain the this row, the fourth row as zero minus one is minus one and one minus minus three is four. And in fact you can verify that thirty six is Actually, 456 into minus 1, 456x, that is minus 1, 
plus 123 times 4. This actually holds true. Okay. Everything clear or any doubt in this calculation? This is slightly confusing part. You can have doubts here. Then we'll go to the, can you repeat it? Okay. Okay. I'll repeat it. Okay. So we are building this table. We want to find the values of X and Y. Okay. So the initial or the starting point is you write the greater number first, 456 you write and then 123. Now, you know, right in this order only the first one is the greater and second one is the lesser so for these x and y are obvious one zero zero one now for 87 okay, you can find it directly from here that 456 minus 3 into 123 456 minus 3 we took uh, we took 87 rather we took 3 into 123 to the other side we express 87 as 456 into x plus 123 into y now as you can directly see x is 1 and y is minus 3 okay then for the fourth row what we did is again so 36 is the remainder 36 we are expressing in terms of 123 and 1 into 87 1 123 and 87 okay so 123 minus 1 into 87 but actually it's like a simpler way to tell this is in in this 87 imagine that you are substituting this entire thing that's a simpler way to say this. Imagine that in this 87, you are substituting this part. So, okay, which implies 36 is 123 minus 1 into 87. No, so in 87, you again substitute 456 minus 3 into 123. All right, so this becomes 456 into minus 1 and 123 minus minus becomes plus so 123 into 4. So because in further rows this substitution business will become difficult. So what I'm saying is here you can see directly that we are just subtracting the rows. So this is 0 minus 1 is minus 1 and 1 minus minus 3 is 4. Okay, that's how we got 36 as 456 into minus 1 and 123 into 4. Okay, now likewise we have to go on till remainder is what? Till remainder is equal to our GCD, right? We'll have to go till that step. Okay, so after this, the next row is, next remainder is 15. So do the same thing about 15. 15 you know, there is, okay, now 
it's not so direct as it is there is one more calculation so okay okay so 15 again you can perform it here so 15 is Fifteen is eighty-seven minus two into thirty-six. This will be better for you to understand. Eighty-seven minus two into thirty-six. In thirty-six, you substitute this again. So, which is and again, you know, in eighty-seven, you can substitute whatever eighty-seven stood for. So, it will be in eighty-seven's place. You substitute four fifty-six. Minus three into one twenty three, and minus two times this one. Four fifty six into minus one. Plus one twenty three into four. One twenty three into four. If you simplify for four fifty six, it will be Okay, eighty-seven minus two into thirty-six. Eighty-seven is four fifty-six minus three times one twenty-three, and minus two times thirty-six is four fifty-six to minus one. Now this will become plus. Okay, plus one twenty-three into four. So for this row, it will be. Three times four fifty six, right? Three times four fifty six. This is minus three, minus eight. So it will be minus eleven times one twenty three. Okay, so fifteen is three times four fifty six minus. Eleven times one twenty three. Okay. And now you obtain this row. Okay, so I'll I'll try to. Okay, this is all. Yes. Okay, so this is how. This is the logic behind this the working. The idea is you can construct this table directly without doing all these substitutions. Okay. So now I will do it without making the substitutions directly. Okay. So the next remainder is six, and six I am expressing in terms of. So. Without making the substitutions, so, the row of six will be minus seven and twenty-six. And how do I obtain this? Is I simply perform fourth row minus two times the fifth row. I obtain this by doing fourth row minus two times the fifth row. Fourth row is this minus one minus six minus seven four minus minus twenty two. It becomes plus, so it is twenty six. And I obtain this rule like what I have to do. I obtain this rule by looking here. So six is thirty-six minus two into fifteen. 
36 is my fourth row 15 is my fifth row so whatever the coefficients i'm applying here the same i will apply in this formula because 6 is 36 minus 2 into 15 i will apply the same rules here so i'll say the row of 6 you know the row of 6 is equal to the row of 36 minus 2 times the row of 15 the row of 6 is the fourth row minus two times the fifth row similarly three for obtaining three it will be 15 that is the row of 15 minus two times the row of six the row of 15 that is three minus two times the row of six so in other words it is the fifth row minus two times the sixth row okay so three plus 14 it will become so it is 17 and minus 11 minus two times 23 is 52 so it will become minus 63 and thus we obtained the coefficients x and y with which we get this did you get this logic sir can you repeat once okay, okay. Oh, where can i do it you can find x and y directly from this table and the logic behind how it works is because of the substitutions but don't pay attention at the substitutions at all and i will draw a fresh table over here okay a fresh table so you have x y write the greater one write the other one initialization one zero zero one now first remainder is 87 so i will speak in this manner now row of 87 is row of 456 minus three times the row of 123 okay i am mentally doing this step that i am bringing three into 120 i am taking three to two 123 on the other side so row of 87 is row of 456 minus three times the row of 123 row of 456 minus 3 times the row of 123 row of 456 minus 3 times the row of 123 right this is clear this row is clear akash asked right yes sir okay, okay. so now for the next remainder that is 36 it will be row of 123 minus the row of 87 row of 123 minus the row of 87 row of 123 minus the row of 87 minus 1 and 4 okay minus 1 and 4 now row of 15 15 is the next remainder row of 15 is row of 87 minus 2 times the row of 36 row of 15 is row of 87 minus 2 times the row of 36 so 1 plus 2 becomes 3 and minus 3 minus 8 becomes minus 11 okay same and then finally now one more step so six third row of 36 minus twice the row of 15 okay you get the point i hope okay yes sir so for completeness i'll just copy it here minus 726 17 minus 63 which we already calculated by this table anyone else has any questions 
ये पीयूष सिंह थ्री एंड थ्री एंड माइनस फिफ्टीन माइनस इलेवन ओके यस दैट ओके वेन टू मल्टीप्लाई रो इंटू थ्री टू और वन यू आर नॉट गेटिंग द पॉइंट स्टिल नॉट गेटिंग द पॉइंट See when to multiply is that. This is the initialization part. First two rows are the initialization part. Okay. Third row is the first remainder that you have. From here, we start with the first remainder that we have, eighty-seven. Now eighty-seven is four fifty-six minus three times one twenty-three. So look at the row of four fifty-six. And apply the same coefficient. Apply the same coefficient to the row. Okay, so four fifty six minus three into one twenty three. Apply it to the row of four fifty six and row of one twenty three. Do you get this point, Aman? So that's how you get the coefficient. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, sir, uh, in short for uh, the every Euclid, uh, so every remainder we get from that Euclidean algorithm, mm -hmm. we need to substitute it in the form of dividend minus divisor into quotient is equals to remainder, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Those will be like those will be your steps basically. and the x and y that you get so we'll continue in the next lecture like where is euclidean extended euclidean algorithm used actually but this is the extended euclidean algorithm this is your basic euclidean algorithm to find the gcd and the extension is you can calculate the table to the side to find out the x and y such that you know d that is the gcd is ax plus by okay you can find those x and y Okay I'll end the lecture now